The first known bricks, consisting of mud, date back 7,000 years BC, the origins of which are associated with ancient Egypt and Asia. Fired clay brick can be traced back to 3,500 BC, and it was used to build the Great Wall of China. The Romans introduced fired brick throughout Europe, however after the fall of Rome its use declined. It became popular again in medieval times and was used in the construction of notable buildings such as the Duomo in Florence and Hampton Court Palace in England. The earliest record of brickmaking in Dublin comes in 1599, when one George Burroughs was making bricks on a four and a half acre site in an area that today is part of Hawken Street. However, brick was not so popular in Ireland as compared with other countries due to the easy access of good quality stone and wood. Following the Great Fire of London in 1666, legislation was enacted for the use of brick in buildings to try and prevent catastrophic city fires. And the impact of this was also seen in Ireland. Building leases in Dublin after 1666 reflect this requirement, leading to a rise in the number of brickmakers and bricklayers. Although brick was imported for the facades of the grander houses, brick was manufactured and used locally throughout the country, with commercial brick fields appearing in major cities, such as those recorded in Dublin at Merion, Ringsend and Sandymount, formerly known as Brickfield Town. At this time, bricks were less uniform in colour, were irregular in shape and quite soft and porous. The joints were formed as the bricks were laid with bedding mortar brought to the brick surface, referred to as jointing. From the early part of the 18th century onwards, the aesthetics of facades became more important and different styles were introduced to provide a more refined and uniform finish. As tools developed and taste refined, the pointing of brickwork in various styles was developed. Pointing is the application of a separate and superior mortar onto the building face. It has both a structural and aesthetic purpose. Structurally, it seals the brick joint, closing up any shrinkage cracks and protecting it from the ingress of rain. Aesthetically, it provides a uniform and precise finish that results in the observer's eye being drawn to the overall brickwork and features such as brick arches and window heads. When undertaking repairs to historic brickwork, familiarity with the various pointing styles is very useful in order to make an informed decision. The following is a summary of the known historic pointing styles in Ireland, with the first three being the most common. 1. Flush. This is the most common style of finish seen on brickwork. It is simple in form and can be used to replicate the original bedding mortar finish by beating back the freshly applied mortar to expose the aggregate. For more details on this pointing style, take a look at the flush pointing video in Old Stone's advice series. 2. Ruled, also known as penny struck. This pointing style involves creating a ruled line within the center of a flush joint. This is simple and inexpensive style often seen on the rear facades of Georgian buildings. 3. Wigging Wigging pointing is a unique Irish style of pointing that is similar but distinctly different in application and not to be confused with the English style known as tuck pointing. Although uncertain, it is understood to have been introduced during the 18th century. It is also unknown as to whether it was applied during the original construction phase or afterwards. Wigging pointing was applied to the front facades of buildings to transform the coarse handmade bricks, irregular in shape, size and colour, to mimic the grandiose style associated with the gauged brickwork, of which there is little seen in Ireland, the end result being a refined and regular brick facade with small joint sizes. 
The majority of wigged buildings can be seen in Dublin, however it's not exclusive to it. For more details on wigging pointing, take a look at wigging pointing video in the Old Stones Advice series. 4. Double Struck Another is skillfully executed joint finish. This requires the stopping mortar to be applied flush to the brick and grooves cut above and below the brick to create neatly finished ribbons. Vertical joints, otherwise known as perpens, are often narrower than the horizontals. This pointing style was generally applied to good quality brickwork with controlled joint sizes. 5. Tuck Tuck pointing is a style more associated with England and has the same appearance as wigging, but less complex in its application. Tuck repointing involves infilling the exposed brick joint with a pigmented mortar with a line scribed over the joint centre to receive the white ribbon or tuck. 6. Weatherstruck Used in the 19th century, this profile is achieved by compressing the upper edge of the mortar joint, so it is slightly recessed at the upper brick, but finished flush with the lower brick. The perpens are struck first and sloped from left to right. 7. Bird Beak This style was developed during the English Tudor period to disguise the irregularity of brick and to reduce the aesthetic of large joints by up to 50%. It involved drawing the trowel along the mortar to provide recesses at the upper and lower brick and forming a peak in the centre, i.e. bird's beak. There are other historic pointing styles not covered, however these shown are the most frequently encountered. It is important to have an appreciation of these styles when making a decision to repoint a historic building, and we hope this video is useful and informative in that regard. This video is proudly brought to you by Old Stone Conservation. For further information, please visit our website or take time to view our other videos in our advice series. <laughs>